Trump is almost always in character when he's yeah. in public. And to me, he looked extra in character most of the time. Stoic and then, face. Yeah, man. every so often you would see like a little bit of it break. So when he walks in, he's very aware of the attention, right. even though there's no cameras in the courtroom because of the rules. But all the reporters are sitting there and the sketch artists are there. Um, so he walks in very like strong, but mm. with a note of exasperation. Right. If you could be it. rude in how you walked that's, That's what him. he was Arrogant. doing. Big Boys Big Neighborhood, boy. beautiful day in the neighborhood, ladies and gentlemen. Ari Melber, welcome back to the welcome neighborhood, back. man. Thrilled to be here. MSNBC, the beat with Ari Melber up in here, brother. Not only a uh, a lawyer, smarter than everybody in this damn room, hip hop historian. <laughs> welcome back to the neighborhood, bro. Great to be here. At a man, big pleasure. Time. I know, Lock man. It is a lot, a lot going on, going on right. I, I, like I don't know where to start, bro. I don't know if you start with what's going on with Trump. If we start with you know the Kendrick Lamar, you know I think Drake we start beef. with music. Man, I think we start with politics and Trump. Okay, well it's, it's your show. show. <laughs> I told him, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, that was Ari Melber, you guys. Thank you for coming in, bro. Yeah. Hey, man, now our entertainment beef is going to start. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, man. You're going to say something go on MSNBC. Mm. I'm going to say something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> then somebody's yes. going to go do something to your house. Yeah. And, oh, wow. so I don't even go this far. You no. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like, there's about nine rounds of, you know what I'm saying, when it came to Drake and Kendrick and all that yes. stuff, man. And, and like you said, we didn't even include the Rick Ross, the Kanye, and mm, Metro yeah. Boomin, you mm. know. Putting out beats for people to just rap and, su <laughs> and submit, you know. So yeah, I wouldn't even go to lay. I wouldn't even go to layers. Yeah, respect. so you'd be like, yeah, big boy, and I'd be like, all right, we gotta go get him, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But we, when we, when you first heard like that, what did you think about that, Ari? When I heard the Kendrick verse on like that, yes, in my own ears, I took it as pretty standard bragging, right? Not over any line, and of a piece with the competition and subliminals that have been traded for some time. Mm -hmm. And so I think we're in a fascinating place with this mm -hmm. and a serious place yeah, now. for those of us who care about these things. Um, but my observation from the start was like that was a strong but traditional verse mm -hmm. that, that we've was, seen from Kendrick before. That we've seen before yep. that was treated in today's internet, digital, mediated life as if it were an eleven. Right. And I think that initial response, which Cole himself said, got people gassed up to a degree that I'm not sure was proportionate to the verse. Yeah, and and I think it's just a sign of the times as well. Like, we've seen certain things before, and of course, we've seen beefs that got out of hand, and we've seen <laughs> others where it was a, a lot of the gasoline being poured on it. And I think that's what social media does now. And everyone has an opinion. Everybody can pop into the reaction videos and be in the square and do this, you know. And I think that's what we saw. And, and even from when when you heard Cole say, you know, the big three, maybe. And there has been other things that's been kind of br brewing and everything. But where I'm at now with it, I'm like, Jesus Christ, dude. Like, I, now I'm. I'm like, wait, did that lyric come from this song? Did that lyric come from, you know, from Family Matters? Did that come from, you know, not like, uh, like, I'm all over the place now. Yeah, I think this is the most significant rap feud in decades. Yeah. It is the first completely holistic streaming digital era rap feud. Yeah. Obviously, you can go to, to Meek and Drake and other things, but this is where we've seen every touch point. So the speed of the oh songs, gosh, the use of multiple different platforms, you got something that's clear it could be on a DSP, but you got something else you could put it on YouTube and people are going to be all over it. Yeah. The speed of the reaction, which, and I don't mean to overanalyze it, but here we no, are, we love do. the culture. The speed of the reaction in this digitized era that we're in, which is very different from the old days, we talk OG, old school, means that the reactions themselves are woven back into the beef in real time. Yes, man. So the streamers and academics, you know, you've been doing this mm -hmm. a long time. Respect. Yes, sir. These new streamers are doing their thing, and there's room for different people to engage in different ways with different platforms. So academics is both emceeing or or observing the thing, then he's being sampled in the thing, then people right. are calling in, right? And that is a product of, yes, we've had radio and we've always had community and streets, but this is like other layers to it. Now, is that good or bad? Well, we're seeing all of that. We're seeing yeah, the speed man. and the thoughtlessness at times, but we're also seeing that everyone can weigh in. And so 
I think for people who care about music and culture, this is a really fascinating, but also at times <clears throat> troubling mm -hmm. acceleration of a motif oh that God. we already had. Literally, mm -hmm. when when Meet the Grams came, I was like, oh my God. Mm. As soon as he starts off with Mr. Grant, uh, Meet the Grams, I'm like, oh my Lord. You know, and like, it's everything. It's, it's, you know, talking to mom, talking to dad. I'm like, oh my God. So I'm in Vegas for Canelo and what would have been the Lovers and Friends festival until it got killed. I, I saw you selling your VIP pass. I had to, bro. You know what I'm saying? You know? I, I, and you know what? No one bid on it. Wow. I didn't get yeah, one man. offer off wow. of that, man. Crazy. But I'm sitting in, and literally, Ari, I'm packing, unpacking my, my luggage. And I go in and I'm like, oh, okay, this is it. Yeah, all right. I, I hear it. I hear it. While you unpack the bars. I'm un while, yeah, while I'm unpacking the bars and unpacking the luggage. So meet the grams. All right, boom. Mm -hmm. This is it. Because first I hear the Family Matters thing. Mm -hmm. When I hear Family Matters by Drake, I'm, I tell my guy, I'm like, oh, my Lord. I said, bro. I said, Drake came with it. You know what I'm saying? Drake came with it. Next day, Kendrick drops. My guy sends that to me. Oh, yeah, I'm loving this. I'm loving this. Now I start to unpack from Meet the Grams. My guy hits me back. He said, man, did you hear it? I said, yeah, I heard Family Matters. I felt like, you know, Drake came with it. I heard the Kendrick thing. He was like, yeah. And I was like, man, yeah, Kendrick did this, did this. He was like, no, he said, I sent you the other one. I was like, wait, wait a minute. So from my packing, I had Meet the Grams, <laughs> and then I had Not Like Us. Mm. Literally, in unpacking a ba baggage that was there for the weekend. Mm -hmm. That quick when we talk about how, how fast these are coming now. And this baggage... May be sticking to people for a lot longer than a weekend. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Word very play. much so. Hello, yeah. there you go. That's great. Hey man, but when what do you think? Now we 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 fast forward, and we were even looking at just the math. Like when when they dropped like that, from like that, like that was March twenty second. Mm -hmm. So let's just go from push ups, push ups from Drake, and the list goes on. All those songs from push ups to Drake's uh, the heart part six. Not even a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know that's like an album's worth of material that came out in less than a month, bro. And these are gonna be charting. Uh, yeah. I, I read this week most of these will be on Billboard next week. Um, Crazy. The the metrics we use right range because we can talk quality, we can talk streams, we can talk art art. Sometimes stuff that isn't well received in the first month, musically or otherwise, years later becomes a classic. Mm -hmm. So we we love this culture, but we sometimes even forget that in the in the rush of it. So there's many ways to measure. But I saw one of the I think the Kendrick "Not Like Us" broke the prior streaming record that was yeah, held man. by Drake for a for a more commercial song or whatever yeah. you want to call it. And so this is the speed and the creation of songs that we're all embracing together, listening together, debating together, which is actually unusual because now everything's so cut up that you're over here, you're OG, oh, you're over here radio, oh, you're, like I said, streaming, oh, you're over here uh -huh. on Twitch. Here, I think over this weekend, this past weekend especially, everyone who cares about music and hip-hop around the world mm -hmm. was taking these all in. Yeah, man. You know, And then it depends how do you take in music culture or ideas. Some people go, oh, what's what's the most popular? Or what's the cool thing to react to? Or or whatever. Or what, what are people saying on social media? And other people, you sit with it and you turn on it. Because yeah. I think they've both gotten strong points in. Yeah. They've both made incredible songs that I don't know otherwise we would have gotten without the sharpness. Right. And I think, quite frankly, they've both gone not over the line, because who's to say where the line is? But I'll put it like this. <clears throat> they've both made extreme and heinous allegations oh, yeah. without evidence. Right. And I don't think just being the best smear artist is the point, even though we all know that dissing, it's literally called diss, it's, it is disrespect, and we all know about battle rapping. But I am wondering why in this moment, I wanted to get your thoughts on this, people are like, oh, well, if it sticks to you, that's good enough, it worked, it dragged you down. I don't want, I understand the competition, but I don't really <clears throat> want to be rooting for something and scoring something and both sides are just lying to upset right. each other and their families, right. even before you get to what else might happen, God forbid. So I'm curious about that part of it, right? I mean, did Pac do what he said he did? I don't know. I don't right. know if anyone really knows. So right. it's not, I'm not here claiming this is brand new, but the speed and severity with which that became a thing. And I'm someone in the news, if something is a completely unverified thing, 
We yeah. don't repeat it. Right. So I'm not even on this platform going to repeat it. But I will say they both made allegations about each other that are quite serious, that mm-hmm. are of a serious and criminal nature. And if neither of them add up to true, then how do we receive that? Because my instinct is to s- put that out of the score. Right. And, and you would <clears throat> put it out of the score. I would. But the court of public opinion. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, uh, and, and I even thought when people said, you know, uh, Ken, Drake has a, an, an 11 year old. And then when that came back and I was like, I wouldn't think that Kendrick could just throw something up like that and it didn't and it wasn't true. Because I was like, man, Kendrick's not, you know, uh, Charleston White or Kendrick's not this guy to just go. And then you people come back and say, no, Drake doesn't have an 11 year old daughter. Maybe it was faulty information. Maybe, you know, maybe he didn't vet it out, you know, but the court of public opinion, how we could say, OK, you know what? Put that out. Rate it like this. Other people take things and run with it. And we've been seeing this so much where people just take it and run with it. And either everything is absolutely true to them or even when it's not true, there's something to it anyway. Or they don't think about it. The same way when we started off the year, Ari, with, 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 with Cat Williams. Everything that came out of Cat Williams' mouth was true to people it was gospel and then when it started being you know debunked it was like oh well you know that's just the way it is and, and i heard Kat, though he that's not a part of he that he can do a hundred yard dash in three seconds right though. yeah I exactly you that. know with, without manipulating the cameras <laughs> no, you know what i'm saying without manipulating the time i mean shout out to cat williams but i it's a it's actually a good Don't comparison well how about this <laughs> cat williams shay shay interview right is now the most watched interview on YouTube of all interviews ever uploaded. It did? It hit Are it. you serious? Yeah, you know I work with facts. Mm. Yeah, and I know it, you do. And it's supplanted Elon Musk, who, whatever you think of Elon Musk, when you're talking about someone who owns multiple companies, going to space, richest person in the world, that inter- the reason people watch that interview is mm. like, you might just be one of his employees and be like, I need to see this, right? right. There's so much ballast behind that. And then the Cat Williams interview was watched that much because it was extreme entertaining, because he's very talented. I was just, I actually was watching the new Netflix special yeah, last I night. Woke Folk. I watched Woke it last folk. night as well. Last. Yes, sir. Now, did we watch it together? Y'all Hello. will never know. There it is. You'll never know. No, we did. Figure on. Uh, <laughs> um, so that would be an example where you're waiting something that's being watched for one set of reasons versus something strictly for the, oh my God, and I have to, and virality. There ain't nothing new about that. You can go right. all the way back to prehistoric times at the village. The storyteller at the fire might have been the most wild right, storyteller. Right, but, right. But we're doing it at a different altitude. And you said with that Club Shay Shay interview, what was the record breaking on that? It was over 60 million views of an interview. There are other things right. on YouTube that have more views, like songs. Right, right, but right. For interviews, right? That's a certain mm-hmm. genre. And it beat wow. Elon Musk with Rogan. Yeah, and so that speaks to like, okay, but why are we watching it? Because oh, it was so wild, because it was so unfounded. To go back to uh, Meet the Grams, and again, we're speaking... In Los Angeles, California, mm-hmm. you know? So uh, is this, I don't know if we're on turf, what turf we're on. Right, right. Respectfully. But I would ask, does Kendrick's verse towards, allegedly, or performatively towards this 11-year-old daughter, we say, oh, that's hard. Oh, man, the way he said it. Lyrically, it could be a story. It could be a poem, right? Right. Is it as hard if it turns out that there is no 11-year-old daughter? Who's being played then? I think that if there isn't, I think it takes away. Like, lyrically, I can look at it like all the lyrics, you know? Story, yeah. But the the story isn't true. And, And to tell you the truth, man, it's almost like, damn, Dot. You know what I'm saying? Because I look at Kendrick as... Did he know that it wasn't, or did he believe that it was? Jerry Seinfeld's famous Costanza defense, Uh George Costanza on Seinfeld says, if you believe it, it's not a lie. Mm. Well, with Pusha T and him calling out Adonis and his kid, and that ended up becoming true. But let me tell you, let me tell you, at no point when I first heard it, Ari, at no point did I say, man, that's bull crap. Because it Same came here. from Kendrick. Yeah. Like, there's other people that I hear that I just like, oh, man, they're good for that. They're good. Oh, that sounds like cap. Whatever, whatever, whatever word we use to describe bullshit. But with Kendrick, I was like, man. And one of my guys was like, I don't think it's true. And I was like, bro, 
he hid Adonis. You know, and then he was like, well, he was about to work and do an Adidas deal with Adonis. He was about to present Adonis. So, oh, oh, and, and I understood that. You know, he said, push your teachers kind of got in front of him. Okay, if that's the case. But with this one, with it coming from Kendrick, that, that's just like this. There's a difference between my going on anything on social media and seeing something. And then there's a difference when I see, I say, hey, such and such that story. You say, oh, I heard it on such and such. Like, ah. But if I go, hey, such and such that story. Where did you hear that? TMZ. It's a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Between so to me, Kendrick is like my like a TMZ. When he said it, I was like, oh, that's real. So this brings me to something else I wanted to ask and bring up. Mm -hmm. We respect Kendrick because of his artistic lyricism, mm -hmm. his reckoning with the difficult topics, and I would argue his artistic relationship with civil rights, mm -hmm. which is not mm -hmm. saying you have to be a politician. We don't, it's not like anyone needs, we don't need more politicians, but artists who use their work to engage with these stories rather than Drake, who I think is supremely talented and has all the bops, but there's a widespread understanding that that's never been where he where Right, he right, works. right. And we know that. And, and again, you're allowed to make different type of music. Exactly. And I really, as someone who studies this, I'm a, I'm a fan. I think you know that. Mm -hmm. I'm a student of this. Right. Very I don't so. I don't think America that has oppressed all these different people in all these different ways. If somebody turns around and says, oh, you're from an oppressed community and what you're focused on is success for your life and family, mm -hmm. success for your community. Being publicly successful and, and even flaunting it. I don't think it's right for America then turn around and say, but why aren't you fixing racism? Right. Well, that person didn't create racism. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. And there's a heck of a lot of other people in the majority who haven't been as marginalized who are also doing that. Right. So, so these these lectures that America or elite white America gives to people, I, I think, is off. Which is my way of saying, if you want to be Drake or Bruno Mars or whatever and just be that, that's fine. Like, not everyone has to be Kendrick. Having said that, if Kendrick is that, and that's why we respect him so much. What do we think about him yet then using that moral authority coming down from the mountain and then using it as a cudgel to settle rap beef with a pop star? Mm -hmm. Is that the best use of that moral authority? Because I feel like so much of the culture, and again, we're standing here in but LA. Why couldn't he? Well, I'm asking, like, is yeah, that the see, use of it? But yeah, I, my, my thing is this, man. There's a, there's a thing that I talk to everybody, and I talk about these enoughs. You know, it's sometimes where people say, oh, you know, and not just Kendrick, but people will say, you know, shut up and dribble. Do this, do that. But with Kendrick, you, me, whatever, you have these things that's called enough. So with Kendrick, he got to be black enough, smart enough, street enough, political enough, uh, equality enough. So all these enoughs, right? And the same with Pac. People say, oh, well, he went from this, Brenda got a baby to such and such. It's not contradicting. That's just us as human beings. So if I feel a certain way, yeah, okay, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to take the thorn, or, you know, the thorn cap that like Jesus off, or I want to take the throne off as well, and I'm going to walk down if it's the mountaintop. Yeah, I'm going to walk down. I'm going to deal yeah. with this. He did say the crown is heavy. Yeah, and, 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 and heavy is, you know, he who wears the crown. So I can understand that. I didn't think that there were some people like, uh, Kendrick came from nowhere. Ani, you said he came from nowhere. Yeah. I don't know what some of the backstory was. Is it, is it laid over from control? When he say they sneak dissing, you know. So my thing is, whatever your argument is, that's yours. You well, know, did I, anyone know that he hated Drake quite this much? This much? No. This no. much. I don't even think Drake knew that. No, but he probably did. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I mean, but. this is so familial and personal and that's why you know everyone understands oh it's competition it's entertainment it's money right but when it gets to this level right you can see and hear and again those of us who study it you can hear it in the voice and the inflection and the choices oh, and yeah, the intensity man. that this is but like, did he ever say i hate oh yeah he did huh? no, <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess he did but like to this to this degree and the family part is oh man and that's what again i mentioned like if he is this moral authority we have to at least ask, is it strange to be doing so much work with children? It's not just referencing them. It's lecturing them about how terrible their their father oh is God. so that can live out there. So when they go to school, a bunch of other kids know about that. And mm -hmm. they're going to – that's – people going to be shouting that at them, right? right. That's different than Ovi Ho. But also Ho. that like, could be I'm dealing with you. 
you're dealing with me. What, how, however I deal with other things outside, right now I'm beeline focused on you. How many passes, this is, is, is just isn't about Kendrick and Drake, right? How many passes must I write you before I say, man, fuck it? You know, how many passes do I have to write you? How many times do I have to be righteous? How many times do I have to turn the other cheek? How, how many times before I just say, you know what, man? I'm 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 gonna flare everybody. And when you were on the middle school, well, elementary school yard, whatever, when you played sock ball, kickball, whatever you played, if you went first, that meant I got second and two. Do you remember that? On on like oh mm-hmm, you go first, yeah. well I get second and two. So that means if I if you go first, so anytime that there's an action, be ready for the reaction. Yeah. You know, you slap me, I'm not gonna slap you back. I'm going to try to destroy you, you know, and and maybe, you know, if 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 that's related to the beef that we're seeing. Yep. But I don't think that and I, and I know that already right, this isn't you putting this on Kendrick or Drake. I know it's not you. It's, it's kind of paraphrasing, you know, but. You sh- I wouldn't put so much on someone where I'm like, oh, man. He came down, or why is he addressing this? Why is he putting it like, hey, man, we're here now. I feel you. All I'm saying is that I believe that he used the moral prism. In other words, he didn't just come in and right, 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 say, right, right. boom, boom, I'm a better this and that. Right, right. <clears throat> he used that in the service of Drake. And so if, again, what I didn't, what I'm not repeating, some of the claims that he's making about Drake and what he says is happening at the house, Right. if you're a moral person and you think that's yes, true, then you man. should have intervened before your self-interest to protect the children, right? right? So, but if you didn't, then maybe this is all just not that, right? Mm-hmm. That what What is your moral position to say, this is about protecting the kids, and that's why he waited years to bring this up until it was in his self-interest in a commercial rap battle. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's right. And then it goes back to, oh, you could say on the but flip. But that's what everything, Don't though. take it too literal. You see people <clears throat> say, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I knew about those parties. Oh, I knew about yeah, such yeah. and such. I knew about you know what I'm saying. Like, like when do you, when are you supposed to stand up? Right, and I but 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 I'm suggesting that I'm not sure that he really believes it's all that. Right, right, <laughs> right. Right, and he knew about Kodak Black and this right. and that. So it reminds me when it gets into the real harsh mode, it reminds me of politics. Mm. Where the, one of the reasons that a lot of people tune out campaign politics is everyone's telling you a oh, most important election ever. My, I'm the only thing standing between us and right. dictatorship. I, I'm the only thing standing between us and racism. And and while some of those plot lines are true, I understand that people get burnt out and are just like, oh, so this mm. politician's telling me they're they're saving the world, but five years ago they were just busy making money. They weren't right. giving these speeches. Now right. they're on the ballot and they're trying to tell me that their opponent's the worst person ever. I don't buy it. Like you know what's wild about politics too? <laughs> it's like what's what's the sign of the time today? Yeah. You know, at, at one point you hear, okay, it's the wall, it's it's abortion, it's this, it's that. And and now we're in another year of here we go. Here we go again. And and, and it's crazy because in an election year, the the what people start to pay attention to once again. And I'm a voter, I've been voting since I was 18 years old. Shout of age. out to voting. Hello. And then you do get kind of discouraged like does my vote count? What's going to be different? But as always, if you don't vote, you know, somebody will vote for you. You know, do I believe? I know I got to take care of me. I got to take care of my family. I got to take care of my environment. And whoever is going to be in office, I still got to survive. Yeah, and the, the, I feel the overlap with the rap battle we're talking about, right, mm-hmm. is if you care about this, you want your voice. That's why you talk to your friends about it or you speak up online or you're engaged in it, right? Mm-hmm. If you didn't, and it was just like USA Today called the Drake right. Kendrick mm-hmm. battle, you'd be like, well, <laughs> I don't want to let them. Well, they right. know. Yeah. They're not even from here. Or they're not about this. Or they haven't studied this. We said the same thing today, so, yeah. Ari, with the WWE, with Shawn Michaels coming in talking about they need to wrestle. I'm like, dude, that's goofy. Yeah. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? For one, wrestling is fake anyway. <laughs> Sorry, tattoo. <laughs> but wrestling is fake. Wrestling. Yeah. And then, like, and I said, I said, dude, you're not even a voice for this. 
How right. do you tell people to put on speedos and slap hands? And, uh, and and I understand what it is when somebody gets caught up. It's like, oh, we, we'll give you a million dollars for a porno. It's about promoting yourself. But but yeah, I think I think that we are the ones. If USA Today came out, we like, who are you? Yeah, we're issuing this ruling, and so then you look at that with our whole country. Who's going to run our communities in our country? Same point. Why wouldn't you want to be involved in vote? People go, oh, I don't like the choices. No shit. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So you got to make sure you're voting and doing something. You got to vote. And if you really don't like the choices, talk to your friends about uh, we're going to register more people. Who's going to run? Might not be you. Might be someone you know. Might be a better choice. But like, where do you think choices come from? Mm-hmm. Everybody sitting it out is why we end up with shitty choices. And I would say it's a non-controversial observation that the presidential choices this year are oh not God. what most people want. You know, we talk so much about. Biden versus Trump, take a step back and just look. It's really interesting polling. If you say to people, are you excited about these two choices? Not who do you prefer, but are you excited about these two choices? Majority of people say no. No. So even the people pushing for one right, side or the other are actually right. not that into it. Before we jump completely off this, so that's why I made the analogy, I did want to say, by the end, you get to not like us, mm-hmm. and then you get to Drake's final heart part six as of this moment, and the story's not over, so we don't know what's going to happen. Right. But... I felt like, not like us, artistically and vibe-wise, did a lot of work. I feel like it really moved things. Uh, The earlier stuff was strong, but if this is a battle, not like us was the closest thing I've seen from either side to a kind of a knockout punch. And Mm. unlike some of the questions I raised earlier, it it, it continued with some of the scurrilous allegations, but flipped it into a party right. and a joke. Right. And we're not even really, we're not really even worried about offending you. We're not really intimidated by you. We're not really, you know, it was where Kendrick, instead of coming off the mount and giving the sermon, kind of came back out behind the church. Right. And was doing the party. And I felt like this, just as a student of hip hop, I was like, damn. And then, and this is the internet thing, you don't have to respond to that immediately. I know there'd been a fast, and Kendrick, who we always were told was just reclusive and doing his thing. So it turns out Kendrick and his team know very well how to move fast and use the internet. Oh, yeah, hell yeah, and, they do. And, and stomp on the, you yeah. know, in the news, we call them news cycles here. It's like, it's just the notes of the internet, but it's like they came right in, oh, Drake's best work, right, Family Matters, with a video and a lot of interesting stuff in it, and it's got, like, beat switches, and it was, had it had a day or two to breathe, I don't know how people would feel, but it didn't. So they move really fast, right, but... Then Drake feels the need to respond to that and to quote Carl Rove, mm. the Republican operative, when you're explaining, you're losing. Mm. Right? Oh. When you're explaining, you're losing. Are we in a diss battle? Mm. Are we in a wait, 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 though? I could get right, you, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you gotta understand what happened right before that. You right. got you saw the video of me, but you gotta understand what? So to me, I was like. Not Like Us was a big moment, and Drake can make bops and hits. And right. he, if he had a couple days, I don't know what he would have done, but it felt like he just was like, yo, okay, wait a minute, and here's how I'm feeling. And in that sense, again, when people say, oh, this is all just entertainment, it's, is it, quote, pro wrestling? I felt like the heart was just him being like, man, come on. Mm. And you don't really believe that, and this is unfair. And mm. I felt like that was really mm. <laughs> his feelings that night, but I didn't think it was actually much of a diss track. Mm, it, what, what do you feel it was? Uh, not a diss, but almost like a, a not a political campaign. It, 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 it was more, yeah, it was like, I'm not that guy. Like, explanation. Explanation. It was almost, I don't want to say a timeout in a pejorative way. Right. But it was almost like, we're doing this, this, this. And then if I were to use a sports analogy, right. it would be like, Mike Tyson just bit your ear. That's not allowed. And you're stepping out of the, and you're like, did everyone just see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we doing that? Right? If and you and then other people say, well, this is street boxing. And you're like, even street boxing has a code. Right. Right? Even real gangsters tend to have codes. Mm-hmm. Omerta and the mafia has codes. The codes get broken. But I felt like it was Drake saying, if we're just going to make up the most scandalous ridiculous thing and right. that's the whole thing this is all that it's going to be let me just say because you see the internet saying well did you even respond to that and it's like well some things are beneath response right until they're not right right if you say to me Ari you know I looked on the internet and someone said you're anti-semitic 
how do you respond? It'd be like, if you know me, my family, right. my commitment to civil rights and equality, or the fact that I'm Jewish. Right, right, right. I don't really feel a need to like respond to that. Right. right? But if it got big enough, if say the the guy, you know, the guy run the other guy running for president, Donald Trump, mm-hmm. he puts it up and it's everywhere. And then people are like, well, why didn't Ari respond? Right. I can understand that something that you even find so extreme, you get to a point where you're like, all right. I have to. So then you do. So it felt to me like a time, a half quasi right. timeout from the battle to be like, but none of that stuff. And then at the end, he was like, man, I'm just like, what did he say at the end? Yeah, like, I'm like, when he talked through? Yeah, like yeah. at the end, he was like, you know, you would have been a worthy competitor if you weren't lying to the editor, boo, boo, boo. And I was like, all right, it was almost like a, a kind of a tired poetry slam mm. at the end. Hey, man, and now when we fast forward and we see, and I mean, it's even hard because everything that you say now is dated. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even when I was looking at this right here, man, from May 3rd just to May 5th, one, two, three, four, right. five, five songs. In like two days. Damn. We have literally come on in the morning. Yeah. And before we went off, we had to change certain to be like, oh, well, this, sure. this, almost like a this just handed to me kind of thing. And so now with Drake home in Toronto being shot up. Yeah. And, you know, from what we understand, his security guard, it's a security guard at the house being hit. Then our guy Quest was speaking on how there's a store, an OVO store in London where yeah, they, they got they, to face. Yeah. yeah. Those kind of things, man, it's like the, the, when it gets to this kind of stuff, too, with Drake or the security at Drake's house being shot, does Kendrick come and say something about that? Does Drake come and say something about Kendrick? Well, you know, so I, or do uh, what I'm saying, or is this the point now where you say, you know what, this is the out? Do you know Drake go make a hit? Kendrick, you got an album coming, make a hit, make hits now. I think that's fair the way you put it. Obviously, we've seen violence in hip hop recently, unrelated to these feuds. We've mm-hmm. seen violence in North America in general because we have a gun culture and a violent culture. We have mm-hmm. to deal with that, uh, and then we've of course seen the actual shootings and violence related to rap feuds. So we all, right. anyone who knows anything about it, we understand that. Kendrick already spoke on it is the wild part because he has the line where he says, I hate when a rapper talk about guns and somebody dies, they turn into nuns. Yeah. That's a line in this beef. Like that line hits very different a couple days later, right? Mm-hmm. I took it, I heard it because right? we all know the history. And I, wanna, I heard that, I think that was on the Euphoria disc. Jesus Christ. And I heard that thinking, oh, like we all understand the s- severity and who's involved and the references so what's an allegory what's a reference what's a threat mm-hmm. and i i was thinking about that line with the reports and here we're talking and this information's still coming in because of, no one's confirming yeah they haven't they haven't apprehended the shooter they don't have a motive that we don't know but it's against this backdrop right so right. i do think you we want to draw a line for people who care about this about what is the difference between the art and the competition and things turning violent and people misunderstanding. And we yeah. see this in many, it's not just in music, in many fields. Yeah. There's always someone I feel like going to take the wrong message. And people are going to insert themselves. Yep. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Like, can... I know that no one, or I feel no one in Kendrick's camp said, hey, you know, get the London crew and tell them to go on over there and spray paint and deface, you know, the OVO store. And while we're at that, get the Toronto boys mm-hmm. and have the Toronto, you know, uh, Crotys go on and, and, and do something <laughs> to, you know. So it, it it, it it does get goofy. Like when when D.L. Hughley had a problem with Kanye, right? Kanye and D.L., they had words, so on and so forth. And they literally had words on the phone as well, just knowing, you know, both of them. But when D.L. was at Nobu eating with his family, someone felt like they could come to him in the restroom on Kanye's behalf. Right. Which is goofy. Very. And you that's the thing where it gets out of hand without the actual parties really being involved. It's exactly. Like, and I've mm-hmm. seen this with, you know, all kind of beats, but I've seen it with Tupac and Biggie, East Coast, West Coast, more than anything. And to this day, on Biggie's death day and Biggie's birthday, I could we could play some Biggie or I could put up a picture of me and Big or something, and it immediately goes to Pac. Yeah. You know, anytime something else goes, it immediately goes to Biggie. And those are people that didn't even know Pac or Biggie. 
and yeah. inserting themselves even decades later into this. And I think that's not not that this is the same thing when it comes to, you know, Kendrick and th- this is a to me this is a totally different beef. That I think that it started to escalate a little bit more when it got to the family stuff. I was like, damn, yeah, but where could it go? You know what I'm saying? Where 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 could well, it go? Because if it's war, then it always goes right. Yeah. So I have a serious thought, but to mix it up, I'll also give you a dad joke. Okay, please do. Uh, they're trying to beef at Nobu. It's like. There's a sushi restaurant. They don't even serve beef. You right, right. That is true. So that is true. somewhere else. <laughs> they don't have no. I think so. I think they have like, like I think they have like nice little burger sliders there. They do. Like yeah, that. they could. So, so oh, it's not big knows beef. Noble. Yeah, it's it's huh. big beef. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's, it's is it not wagyu? Is it wagyu? Beef. Is it wagyu? I don't know, man. I yeah. haven't. Uh, we used to do like our uh, iHeart parties there. Yeah, and it's Respect. different when you're eating off of somebody else's credit card. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know about that. Yeah, it's, yeah. To- it's, it's totally different, man. And did Future not say? Tell me. Nobu, 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 mm. Nobu, 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 Nobu. He said it that many times? He said it that many right. times. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. But do you think he was talking about Nobu? I do. Ah, and there when is. I went to Nobu, I was like... Nobu, Nobu, Nobu? I said, to the, I said to the future song, Change It, and they said, overnight. Oh, really? I mean, obviously, it's a fancy, popular place, but they just said, overnight. Like, it was just way more people were like, Hey, man, they probably start seeing people walking in there probably like, yeah, Future probably sent this. <laughs> you know what I'm uh, saying? Because there's sometimes, man, where I'm like somewhere and somebody could come up to me, Ari, and I'm like, damn, where did they know me from? You know? Sure. And then there's other times where like, yep, that's one of my listeners over there. You know what I'm saying? Like, like yeah. So Hey, but shout out. Shout out. 92.3. Yeah, hey, I'll take it, brother. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll take it and run with it. Making my shit quadruple. Platinum. Yeah. That's <laughs> Pac. Hey, man, this dude. You remember yeah. that? Hell yeah. Of course you, do. you guys play that? You still play that, Sam? Like, well, when, 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 when. It was a uh, different station. Though. It was a different station. So when, oh, when I was over at the other station, we edited that part out. Oh, yeah. right. Because you yeah. wouldn't. Okay. Yeah, man. Yeah. We, we definitely. That, that was well, like. I'm neutral. You it know, wasn't I'm, hard radio beef, but no, yeah, no. just cut it out. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm a civilian, so I'm right, neutral right. Yeah, to everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. California. Hey, man, we've heard civilian. Making my shit quadruple platinum. We've heard civilian so many different ways now. Like, oh, he can, man. He, you know, you're a civilian, right? Like, I'm, I'm 100% civilian. <laughs> yeah, man. No, I'm not even. Yeah, not a hybrid. Right, right, right. No. Yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. Student, journalist. Right. Uh, and a respectful See, observer. I'm a, I'm a civilian now. Well, you were a bodyguard, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, that's not a bodyguard a thing. So. That, you know, and then yeah. before that, we don't even got to get into that. Yeah, that's definitely different. so. And, yeah. Until I get into my rap beef and somebody bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so get, get into my my, uh, yeah. my entertainment newscaster beef yeah. with Ari. Like, oh, we found this out about you. Oh, well, there we go. Yeah, we found this All out right, about newsca- you. And newscaster beef. Yeah, man. Yeah, you watch out. Yeah, Because we'll just be like breaking news. Yeah. Come in on it. So those are my, those. that's the light part in the dad jokes. The serious points you raise are important. And I think... One of the things we're talking about of why, if you care about culture, you get this, and if you're on the outside looking in, you don't. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not just music. It's not mm-hmm. just artists. It's not just entertainment, right? This is part of the credible leadership that people feel in their own lives from a young age. And and when you're especially, I mean, this is my observation, in societies that are more broken and unequal— Music and culture plays an outsized role yes. because the official institutions have failed or not for you. The government doesn't respond to you. The police terrorize you. Right. right? The financial institutions are against you. Right. The, the housing market, the stock market, this yeah. is not for you. Right. So unlike someone who might be in a more holistic place in society where you say, you know, a lot of people, they think of the police as their protector. Right. Why do they think that? Because the police protect them. Right. That's why. Mm-hmm. So they call the police for safety and help, right? And other people don't have that luxury. Oh, yeah. So I'm not saying anything that's not known at this table, but I think cultural leadership plays a larger role. If you look at the history, for example, of the civil rights movement in the United States, it often began with the church. Mm-hmm. It didn't recruit from politics. Politics was closed to black right. Americans. Yeah, right? very much so. It didn't recruit from finance. Finance was closed, right? The church was one of the institutions that had organization, education, some degree of finance, some degree of internal monetary right. support. These, these are all tangible things, right? So that's why the civil rights movement often was that. When I mentioned today, and I don't mean it facetiously, that artists like a, a Kendrick Lamar and other artists are seen as part of that voice, mm-hmm. right? 
they're more credible than some other figures, right, even right, though right. things today, you can measure some things are not the way they were in 1955, mm -hmm. but that's the tradition. And so then you say, when there are attacks on those people, um, proportionate or disproportionate, musical, allegorical, or otherwise, right? People feel so invested. Then you add to that the negative part, which is this is a very violent society. Not all societies are this violent. Not all societies have this access to guns, right? So this is why the shit's complicated. Mm -hmm. But people care this much, and other avenues and other points of leadership have been cut off, and there's access to violence and weapons easily, and then you add in the internet acceleration oh and conspiracy gosh. theories and things. So again, if somebody took this out of context, is he defending the bad part? No, I'm not defending the bad part, but let's understand the complexity of it. And so you're describing people who might get over-involved or get confused or have other agendas, right? But they're also coming in because they care so much. And that's that funny thing where like, if this were a feud or a contest between two other people, make them... Um, Maybe they're visible people in some way. Um, they're on Real Housewives or something, mm -hmm. right? It wouldn't get right. maybe to this point right. because there wouldn't be that many people that right. motivated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's why it matters. So if you study that, you go, oh, that's why. And so even from whatever metric you want to use, number of people reached, how much people care, political metrics, like we say, oh, who can move people, endorsements, cosigns, yeah, it matters. It's not only this community, by the way. One of the other problems with, I think, the way that – hip hop and black culture is covered in America is it's so racialized that you forget that like, right, but we're also just talking about people and culture. Mm -hmm. So it matters a lot whether Taylor Swift engages in this election, right? right. Because of her huge following. Mm -hmm. And it, J Joe Biden thinks that he should have the support of Obama. A lot of people who like Obama don't agree. Right. But I can guarantee you if Kendrick and Drake and Ye held a unity concert and asked everyone to register to vote and said, and Ye would never right now, right, but just, yeah, I'm just yeah, hypothetically yeah. said, a lot's going on. Democratic Party's not perfect, but this Trump thing's gotten really out of control. Unity concert, register to vote. Yes, that would make a huge difference because that's mm -hmm. power, right? And if Taylor popped in there, forget it, then we could cancel the election, right? right. <laughs> so that's power too. And I think sometimes people are so racialized, they view it as only that. So that's why we're in this, this very complicated space. And as we talk about it, it's like, yeah, we hope there's no other incidents and violence and people getting, getting that overly extended. But that's mm -hmm. part of the underlying reasons as, as, as far as I observe. Speaking of, of just kind of like violence as well, I, I do want to speak about Trump. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say violence because he can get away with it. Trump is now in court, right? Yep. How many charges? <laughs> so tr Trump has four cases. Right. One he's on trial for in New York, which is a criminal trial. Mm -hmm. um, he has 90 counts if you do all the cases combined. The trial that's happening right now in New York is, is a business fraud and a campaign right. violation, allegedly. I've been in that courtroom. I was in that courtroom last week. Oh, wow. He's sitting in there. While watching Trump walk, was in while there? He was there. Yeah, all, we were, you know. 30 feet apart, small courtroom. You got Secret Service, bailiffs. How jury. do you get in there? Do you have to get cleared through, through MSNBC? MSNBC, we have one spot. So we share it. We rotate right. it. Um, there's a couple of different press spots. So big outlets have spots. But it's the same. I mean, I used to do, as a lawyer, I used to do arraignments in that same building, 100 Center Street, downtown New York. So it's for me, it was actually surreal. You know, you know something, but they it, like having done just any normal daily arraignment there where whoever was picked up last night and we go through with the judge and then being in that same place and we're seeing Trump sitting there. Wow. It was, it was surreal. Did you see him walk in? Oh, yeah. And what does he look like? Because people would say on his face it's just, you know, he had looked tired, mm -hmm. passed gas, you know, just look uninterested. Like, what did he look like to you? Did he look extra confident? Trump is almost always in character when he's yeah. in public. And to me, he looked extra in character most of the time. Stoic then, face. Yeah, every so often you would see like a little bit of it break. So when he walks in, he's very aware of the attention, right. even though there's no cameras in the courtroom because of the rules, but all the reporters are sitting there and the sketch artists are there. Um, so he walks in very like strong, but mm. with a note of exasperation. Right. If you could be it. rude in how you walked, that's, that's what him. he was Arrogant, doing. How right? tall is Trump to you? 
I mean, I I don't want to misstate it, but he's right. he's over six one. I mean, right, he's, right, he's, right. And in person, does he look like a big guy in yeah, person? Yeah, he looks yeah. like a big guy. Does he look like he weigh over two hundred thirty five pounds? Uh, like I mean, big boy. Now? I'm not a doctor. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, you are a lawyer, so you're not going to answer any of that. Well, I don't want. I mean, we could look up what they say the weight is, and then right. you can have somebody estimate it. Right. I'm not, but but I will say, occasionally. So you have the jury. I'm sitting here on the. You have the jury to the right. The defense table there is on the left. The judge is here. And he's sitting here, and when some of the testimony was getting really negative on him, where they were like, well, yeah, it was clearly they're lying and this and that. And you'd see him, and he's in character, which is he's trying to be strong. But he's stuck there. He doesn't get up unless the judge says so. He can't go to the bathroom unless the judge says so. This is a very different dynamic. Right. For him. And so he's sitting there, and then they said something about it, lying, this and that. And you saw, even though he's in his mode of like, mm-hmm, when they said the thing, he was like, and for like a... Half second, you might feel that that was a human response, right? Mm. Which, by the way, any other human might feel if you're just stuck quietly watching people drag you. Right. And they've prepped for months. Right. And now they're setting up, you know, and you're just, but you could see that breakthrough occasionally. Um, And as for our justice system, you know, this is how it's supposed to work. And the justice system fails in so many ways. And we've talked about that at this table. Mm. But when it works, you are held to account. You are put on trial by a jury of your peers. We're not supposed to judge it by whether you agree with the outcome. So we're talk- we talked about how Drake Kendrick's going to evolve. This is going to evolve. We're talking right now. It's not going to be weeks till we get the right. outcome. I think, and I know this sounds, you know, idealistic, but I think it's constructive for the country that this process is playing out and we have to be able to sit with the outcome. So if he skates, people go, I can't believe he skated again. It's like, but that's how the system works. In other words, he was actually held to account. And if he's convicted, yeah, there are people who say, oh, they always had it in for him. Well, I was right. there. There's this jury. They very carefully selected the jury. They're giving him all the due process and protections. And this is it. Now, is there overwhelming evidence of criminality by this man? Is it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Does that mean that he must be convicted? No. This is the system. Um, and so I get why people have such strong reactions all over it. But if you're really honest with yourself and you are a conservative Republican and you think sometimes things are unfair and sure, you know, you have to look at why the guy's in so much trouble, mm-hmm. right? Unless you have a view of the most grand conspiracy theory ever. Right. That all these different prosecutors in all these different places and all these different independent judges, including Republicans, have signed. It doesn't make any sense. Right. No, it's the evidence. That doesn't mean he's guilty. It just means that's why he's in so much trouble. And I love how even with his cabinet administration, everybody was guilty but him. Everybody. I'm there, like, okay. There haven't been this many presidential aides convicted right. since <laughs> right. Nixon. Wow. And Nixon is a low watermark, right? And the whole point of this thing is like, you sh- it shouldn't have to matter which party Nixon was in, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, Rob Blagojevich was a Democrat in Illinois. Mm-hmm. Obama's seat came open. Yeah. And he was the governor. He doesn't own that seat. The people are supposed to own that seat. And yeah, this Democratic like governor was crooked, and he yeah. said, "He said, let me move this." <laughs> yeah. wow. And that wasn't just like a VIP pass to a canceled Usher show, right? Right? Because right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, at least you owned that. Yeah, that is true. That's your private that property. Is true. That I could have sold. That fell to zero value. Yeah, it did. It but, was at zero value when I tried to put it up for sale. <laughs> but right. he, but that Democrat was crooked, right? And he tried to sell Obama's seat, which was yeah, man. going to be picked by the voters. Except, no, he. That is the ultimate type of corruption Damn. and he was convicted and he went to prison who cares that he was a democrat or at one time he was actually an ally of obama because they worked in right. illinois together but who cares in other words we have to have a higher standard that i get that people are cynical but like we have to have or try to hold ourselves to that higher standard and the problem on the trump side is you got way too many people who i'm not talking about ideology that's fine you can believe that we got way too many people who would sell out honest government and democracy mm-hmm. itself because they're obsessed with this man and this is a man who, not that long ago, in 2015, all the top Republicans said was a piece of shit. Right. And, and they said it in very many ways. I could give you different quotes, but that's the core thing. So even they know what they think of him. Hey, Ari, with you being on and being extremely vocal and not on the political side. Vocal you, but you, fair. You, you, yeah, vocal but fair. <laughs> and you, you pull facts. It's not a political show. It's not we leaning it this no, way. No, it's evidence. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever feel for when you're walking out, like, because people are just crazy. The same way somebody, you know, OVO and shooting up Toronto, Drake's home, or, you know, do you ever feel like, have you had someone that came up to you and disagreed with you about a fact or something that you said about Trump? Yeah, I think people have very strong views. And I think sometimes, depending on where you are and what interaction you're having, they are responding. So, 
number one, my job is to do my job and not let that overly affect me. Mm-hmm. And number two, what I keep in mind, and, you, and you've been around this for a long time, so you probably know this. Most of the time, it's, it's not someone responding to me anyway. By which I mean, they're responding to the guy on TV. Mm-hmm. Or what they heard about the guy on TV or their vision of that. Right, and depending on their information and their life, right, right. that's with it. So I don't mm-hmm. try. I try not to actually take and it that personal. And the snapshot and the soundbite, yeah. And, is, yeah. and it might be a clip they got that was an excerpt over here. I mean, so the most interesting thing sometimes is like um, that people sometimes are mad and they're incorrect. So they're uh-huh. mad at something, and it's loud like, and oh, wrong, right? And so that is easier to. To be like, oh, okay, you don't even like, please, Lord, don't let me be misunderstood. Mm. Um, or as Wheezy said, what understood ain't got to be explained. Mm. You have an album but, all somewhere. <laughs> 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 um, but <laughs> I love that response. Yeah. But, but I don't feel bad about being misunderstood when, for example, someone I was on, to pick up uh, just an example, I was on Bill Maher's show out here mm-hmm. and they had another guest. And he said, well, you never have the other side on. And that's, that's my problem with your network. And I was like, oh, this man doesn't watch my show. Right. Because something that I get criticized for a lot is why bother having the Trump lawyer on? Why do you have this and that on? Well, well I've had Trump's New York lawyer on, Joe Tacopina. I had his Florida lawyer on, uh, Tim Parlatore. Right? I had his Georgia lawyer on, Drew Finley. That's a lot of lawyers. As, well, lawyers need lawyers. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> lawyers Around there. need lawyers. Mm-hmm. But I, I had Steve Bannon on. You remember him? I had mm-hmm. Corey Lewandowski, Trump's campaign manager. I've also had the Biden officials. I've also had Snoop Dogg on. Right, And a little right. baby. And Erica Badu. It ain't yeah. big boy, but it's something. Right. But so, <laughs> those are the enoughs I was talking about. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so when somebody said, and he, this, this guy's saying this to me on a show, like where everyone could see it. And it's like, that's so funny because. Were I'm, you able to say that? Oh, I, I, yeah. I mean, it yeah. was not a problem. But I'm thinking that like any informed person watching is like, what a weird thing to it. You could attack me for other things, but this is the hour that has the most people. And when you look at the, the democratic side, right, there's a lot of shows that do it whatever way they do it. You know, you can watch a show on CNN and it's more narrow, but, um, this cycle I'll have had the Biden officials on uh, the president's invited. If he wants to come on, I haven't had him. I've had Cornell West on mm-hmm. who's making the challenge. I'll have had mm-hmm. RFK jr. On. So that's the program. I'm, I'm letting my viewers hopefully learn from all this, make up their own mind. Mm-hmm. Right. So for someone to come up to me and be like, my problem with you is you've never had Cornell West on the show. I'm like, I see that you're mad at something else, someone else's show. Right. Because I have had. So that's yeah. the other thing about it, right? Yeah, those, and those are the enoughs also. I, and, and I've had a career full of them. You haven't had, oh, it's not West Coast enough, it's not this enough. And then, or you haven't had, like, no, I did have that person on. Yeah. Yeah, you just, oh, or, or even day to day, can you guys play such and such? Like, we played it. Yeah. We just didn't play it. While you were listening. Right, you got to tell Or them. you missed it or like. I would tell that listener, we played it and you played you yourself. You played yourself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey, man, do you think that Trump would be held in contempt? I think it's unlikely. Right. And, you know, he's on his 11th violation. The judge <laughs> is like, I will put you in jail if I have to, but I don't want to. And I think that anyone else who would attack the judge's family and the jury this way would be oh my in. Oh, gosh, man. But. This is the real world. And if you stop the trial to try to jail him and he appeals it to the Supreme Court, you might have the whole trial unwound. And I think the judge knows that. So in a practical way, I just don't think the judge will do it. Yeah. And then if it went to the Supreme Court, how could he win there? (laughs) <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you know. Yeah. How, how could that? That's like me going somewhere and be like, all right, Honorable uh, Jose, Honorable uh, Louis, Honorable Ani. Uh, yeah. oh, I'm dismissed. I am I am dismissed. Respect. Man, hey man, so what's coming up next for you, bro? Well, this these next few months of the home stretch are gonna be a big deal in political. Oh my and gosh, very media, much. So, right. Man. So um We probably may not see you. I'm gonna be I'm busy covering that, mm-hmm. right? And then on the on the beat, you know, we have a couple extra things we do. We have a series called Mavericks and a series called Summit, uh, where I do long form interviews with people who are Mavericks in the world of culture, so they're doing it their way or some at the mm. summit of their field. Um, and we found a lot of interest in that, which again, and we found like on YouTube, those are doing millions of views. They're some of the, uh. the most watched things. We did one with Bob Woodward that was one of the most watched videos for MSNBC in last year, even amidst all the indictments and stuff. So, A, that's something that we're working on. In the long on. form? 
Long form, 40 Let minutes, hour. Yeah. And I know that you said it got the most views, but what you need, and I'm not saying need, need is such a, uh, I suggest yeah. that whoever you have on there, they go and they talk mess about everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and then really get to that cat level. Yeah, man. Some things are true. Other things are I heard. And, and, <laughs> and, 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 then the person, and then the other person be like, come on, cat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They be, come on, Ari. <laughs> and that's all, that, that's all you have to do. Uh, With every guest that you have, it's almost make it seem like, I wait, come on, stop it. But You're that, talking about a friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> come on, cat. Come on, cat. That's all you got to do. And that, that right there. It clears the, all the liability. It takes it off of you. Yeah, that, that's, you that's the new allegedly. On. Allegedly, come <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's well, the, that is the new allegedly. Come well, on. What I'll say positive on it is, to me, it's encouraging that people really do. So many people still want to sit down and get the whole story and watch yeah, something man. in depth. And the internet has has light and dark to it, but that's a good thing. As for you know, shout out to Club Shay Shay. Mm. This is what I can say positive. Positively, it's building your own platform. And curating a conversation that all the gatekeepers and the traditionalists wouldn't do. Right. And boom, look, there is interest in it. Right. Look, we see. This is the culture. So I give respect to that. That doesn't mean it's a free pass for everything, as we've been joking about. I just think it's really important with the, with the stakes of the world we're living through that we make sure we tell people whether we are dealing in facts and with a process, what is the result of this product that you're listening to or reading, right? Mm -hmm. Or whether this is just goofing around, right? Because right. if it is, like, Saturday Night Live is parodies. It's funny. There's no fact. You can't fact check the jokes. The whole point is they're jokes. Right. But one of the biggest problems we have and how fast all this is moving online is are we correctly labeling, hey, this is just for fun. Don't take it too serious. Oh, this is parody. This is satire. Right. And I used to practice First Amendment law, free speech law. There's a lot of speech protections for jokes and satire, mm -hmm. right? If your punchline is funny and it says something that's not 100% true, it's very hard to get sued for defamation mm -hmm. off a stand-up routine because the courts reason that you have to be able to joke. But let's be clear. If it's not stand-up, right. right? Like, we need that. And I, you, you know, so... So again, shout out to, I'm not trying to make an example out of that interview, but it's sort of like, if Kat's doing stand-up, then that's fine. But once people are watching it going, oh, I heard that, that's true, that could affect their lives. And mm -hmm. I, we still have to care enough about each other, I, I believe, to be like, well, let's make sure we label that right. So you don't watch some jokes and some stuff, oh, right. of course I was just making, and then think that like that's how to live your life. And like this isn't a joke. The, the election outcome's not a joke. What the Supreme Court's doing isn't a joke. Oh. Um, and if people are just casual with it or lying about it, then everyone's going to, you're going to wake up one day and be like, how did it get like this? And it's like, partly because of them and partly because of all of us. Man, Ari Melber. Respect. Thank you for coming back yeah, into man. the neighborhood, This bro. was great. Man, no, we definitely see you again, Perfect bro. I love time. being this, here, man. This is our long form. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, no, but thank you for coming into the neighborhood, thank man. You. Like we say, you know, we're, we're fan first. Always love to I have love you, you guys. in the neighborhood. Yes. We can mark time with time. Mm -hmm. and say like, oh, I haven't seen you in a couple months, but next time I see you, we're just going to mark it. With how many disc records have come out? Oh yeah, so very it could much. Be a so. month from now and forty-seven records. Good man, at, at the the rate that is going, hopefully this this was going to slow down. Respect, but then we'll see. We, we it'll be something else. It's always respect. something. It's respect back to you, Ari Thank Melber you in the neighborhood, Thank man. The beat with Ari Melber, MSNBC. Make sure you guys check them out, Big Boys Neighborhood. Big boys.